everyone, my name is Buckle. I'm the storyteller for Uncanny Valley Cancer Cell, and we're so excited to present our original episodes here on the Onyx Path Twitch stream. We have some awesome new visuals created by our producer and player Deanna, so that even our older fans will have something new to enjoy about tonight's broadcast. Myself and several of our players are going to be live in the chat, so if you have any comments, questions, or if you just want to get to know us, feel free to chime in. Otherwise, we hope that you can sit back, relax, and enjoy Uncanny Valley. Nighttime in the office park. The low humming of servers under the rhythmic drip, drip, drip of an overused AC unit. An oasis of quiet in the usually crowded and cacophonous talent agency. In the line of abandoned executive suites, one remains occupied, even this late at night, casting light in the otherwise dim bullpen. One figure sits at his computer, shuffling thumb drives and DVD cases. Eventually five rise to the top. He checks them over one last time, pops each one into the player, and appraises the faces that he hopes will be a chart-topping cast, a sure-fire hit. He hits play. Here's your script. And um, when are you ready? All right. <clears throat> Welcome to the small town, a quiet retreat hiding dark places, secrets, lies, and terrors beyond imagining. Yeah, that was good. Um, let's let's try it sweeter. You know, like okay. really, really show us how innocent this town is. All right. Welcome to this small town, a quiet retreat hiding dark places, secrets, lies, and terrors beyond. All right, uh, I know that I know that this is reality TV, and you, you're not hiring writers. But who wrote this? But Samantha, the intern. Okay. How about I just try freestyling something just real quick? Okay. All right. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Vic Cooper. Ever since I was little, I knew that there was something beyond what we normal humans would see. I'm traveling across America to find the truth. Wow, yeah, that was great. Uh, yeah, um, um, yeah. You know, we'll, uh, my people talk to your people. We'll, we'll talk. Um, you know, my kid's a huge fan. C could you do the Dino voice? Radical Rex. Yeah. Wait, 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 just real quick, what's your daughter's name? Uh, Tina. Tina. Hey, Tina. This is Radical Rex. I just want you to know that I'm traveling across America looking for ghosts, hauntings, phantoms. <laughs> All that good stuff. That is so great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah. Oh, she is going to love that. I haven't that. thought about that, that character in a good little while. Written in block letters over an exciting animated backdrop. Joshua Desmond Hammond, stunt coordinator, followed by a montage of clips. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is from Shattered Future. This is Angelina Jolie. She could really take a hit. You'd be surprised. Oh, and this, I love to call this. This is my Tom Cruise set. This is me running through any street, anywhere, up, down, helicopter chases, roof jumps, whatever you need. This is from, this is from Bug Wars 2. You see right there? That's me, I'm on fire. That's not CG. That's me actually on fire. Right there. Over the edge. Yeah. Fun one. Nice to meet you. Name's Mason. Mason. Um, I spent the last 10 years doing landscape, wilderness, and wildlife style photography, cinematography. A little bit here for a website, there for a magazine there. Uh, Sorry, we've, we've seen so many people today. You were the cameraman, right? Yes, I, that's within my skill set. So okay. 
Can you handy cam? Is handy cam okay? Wait. Handy cam? What was the rate for this job again? 100 a day. The fuck? Okay, 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 let me get something straight. You want me to come in here and do a handy cam for you? And I just got in at the end of a long line of motherfuckers who undoubtedly just told you no, and it's a hundred a day? That's the rate, man. Take it or leave it. I think I'll be leaving it, and you'll be fucked. So, how does two hundred a day sound? I'll be fucked. I'll be fucked. Can you believe this motherfucker? He comes into my office. Mr. Bergman! Yes, Shannon. Mr. Bergman, you know that we don't have any other options. Shannon, shut the fuck up. We can't... I'm sorry, I can't sit through another one of these. Just give him the man his money. So, 100 a day. Mr. Bergman. 150. 175. 178. 80. 179. 180. 180. 180. All right. You 180. Uh, just like I wanted to pay you. Jesus fucking Christ. All right, next. You are? I'm Darla. Darla? Darla Kane. K-A-N-E? Yeah, yeah, like sugar cane. That's with a C, but all right. You're auditioning for the? The, the psychic. The psychic. The psychic role, yes. I see. All right, well, do your bit. Well, I guess I should tell you about the first time that I saw a ghost, right? Well, I was a little girl, and I was in my room, in Macon, Georgia, that's where I'm from, uh, and I was asleep, but then I woke up because I heard a noise coming from my closet, and I'll be damned if it were my Uncle George. He was standing in my closet, and I thought, well, he's been dead for three years. He got caught making meth by the wire because his trailer exploded, and Uncle George, he looked at me, and he said, Darla, I come with a message from Jesus. He said, you need to help people with your ability to see ghosts, and I said, Hell yeah, I do. I help people across the continental United States for five ninety five a minute via the telephone, you know. You see. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Can we can we hear your horror movie scream? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I could I could do that. <laughs> Fantastic, Darla. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank, oh, thank you. So thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Whew, the rack on that one. Mm. Oh, hello there. Didn't hear you come in. My name is Dr. James Wolf. Yes, I am a real doctor, and no, Wolf is not a stage name. I got my degree in 2011 from the UCLA School of Psychology, and yes, I'm a doctor. I just happen to kind of look like this. Um, I have the superpower of being able to say anything with conviction and a straight face. For example, <clears throat> the codependency of agnosticism is excessive in its reinforcement. What does that mean? Literally nothing. But I can say it with conviction and I can say it in a lab coat. Not a whole lot of guys able to do both. So, uh, if you're curious about hiring me and my good looks, why not hit me up? My agent is... A smile, although no one is here to see it. Yes, these five are the ones. His perfect cast. Perfect. The last rays of sunlight course over the plains and the wheat fields of Kentucky. An old, bumpy road, poorly maintained, stretching out into the abyss, into the sunset, and a passenger van clunking along and bouncing through it. Looking closer in, you see in the driver's seat a young 20-something, unremarkable brown hair, T tapping his fingers on the steering wheel and humming to the music softly coming out of the radio unit. 
and to his right, a brusque cameraman named Mason. Oh my god, this road has not changed for the last 40 minutes. <laughs> Whoa, the- look out! Where the fuck are we? Um, we are five minutes outside of the charming town of Manascus, Kentucky. Oh. Great. Don't worry, we'll be there in no time, I promise. Clunk yeah. clunk. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Mm. Hey, hey, uh, Mr. Driver Man, I don't remember what your name is. I'm sorry, sweetie. Uh, uh Tony. Tony. T- Tony, can you, uh, try and avoid the potholes, please? Yeah, uh, sorry, miss. You know, that pothole was in the way when I dodged the other pothole. Yeah. Oh, look out. <coughs> ah. Hey, that's what I'm talking about, sweetie. <laughs> if you could just, uh, not do that at all. You know, even if you need to go on the shoulder a little bit, you see, I don't want to hurt my back. You got it, Mrs. Oh! Miss. 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 Yeah. Thanks. Your defense, I think this road is potholes. In the back seat, the front row, Miss Darla Kane, sitting next to a very uh, tired and cramped looking JD, and taking up the luxurious entire back seat, your star and host. <laughs> Vic. Uh, would everyone like to take a chance to describe how they look, what they're wearing, anything important to them emotionally right now? <laughs> um, Mason's got his feet kicked up. He's wearing work boots and jeans, t-shirt and a vest littered with pockets for all sorts of rolls of ca- uh, rolls of film, different lenses, notes, pencils, pens, uh, this and that. Sketchbooks, of course. And uh, just sitting there with the hat pulled down to keep the sun out of his face on his uh, shortcut hair. Medium height, stocky build. Uh, pretty standard looking dude. Uh, Darla is in the back seat. She is in her yoga pants because she's off screen. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, so she is rocking some uh, yoga pants and, you know, maybe like a tank top, you know, just super comfy clothes. Ugg boots, of course, because that's what you do. Uh, and uh, she is a, a, a very tall, busty blonde woman who looks like if Stevie Nicks and Dolly Parton decided they ought to have some crazy lesbian love child. Uh, and she is uh, in the process of rolling down the window um, and with cigarette in hand and leaning her head out. Well, it's a passenger van, so the most she can manage is to sort of do that slighty motion where it pops open. <laughs> yeah. But it's just wide enough. She can go ahead and ash her cigarette through there. Yeah, yeah. She's definitely smoking like a chende. And then there's JD doing his best to sleep on what is akin to more a bron- bucking bronco than a tour bus. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's currently just wearing a t-shirt and some, uh, and some sports shorts, just, uh, doing his best to relax. Definitely no shoes or socks. <laughs> Definitely not caring, uh, what, <laughs> what anybody else is up to and just wanting to be, uh, left alone. He's got a few fresh bruises from, uh, previous, uh, stunts. And, uh, he's not feeling particularly great at this moment. Uh, Vic, uh, as you said, is taking up the entire back seat, uh, of the, uh, of this van. And is, uh, uh, he has, uh, oh, what, I, I don't remember the name of that hairstyle, where it's all buzzed except on top, and the top is kind of long. Undercut. Undercut. He has, he has, uh, one of those, uh, all, all black, all, uh, uh, all brushed back, and uh, he's wearing uh, he's wearing what he would consider to be his comfortable jeans. Nevertheless, they're still tight. Uh, he's he's wearing uh, he's wearing a he's wearing a shirt that is just sort of like uh, that is also fairly tight. He's he's the kind of guy who does want to show off his physique. Uh, he's been uh, he, had, he spent the first hour on the road trip maintaining his uh, his social media presence. And then once uh, that ran dry and he didn't want to seem desperate, then uh, 
then he switched to doing some sort of uh, so, some sort of mobile game, and he does not want and he doesn't want anyone else to know that he's doing that <laughs> because he doesn't want to uh, he doesn't want to appear vain or surface level interest, you know. Well, you know, it's a shame that he is so distracted because was he not distracted, he probably would have noticed a very hairy, uh, very amiable scientist sitting in the very back of this pass van and really, like, trying to claim part of that seat but uh, unable to do so. Poor James Wolfe, <laughs> at the loading of this passenger van, was trying to get his personal luggage in the back of the car and was went, went completely unnoticed by everyone and ended up having to jump in the very back of the van as it took off. It happens. And he really would like a place to sit, uh, but Vic isn't really allowing him the room. Uh, I like to think that Vic probably legitimately didn't notice him for the, like the first hour, but now that he's back there, it's well, well, this is this is my spot, is what it is. <laughs> uh, so Wolf is, as you described him, a uh, pretty big, pretty hairy guy. He's got a full beard. Uh, he's graying at the temples. His hair's about shoulder length. He has it in a you know ponytail. Uh, it, he he's the dude. He's the dude from Big Lebowski, and um, right now he's got his legs flung over someone's suitcase, and he's playing the same cell phone game that Vic is. But uh, yeah, he's uh, he's actually doing a lot better at it than him. <laughs> <laughs> Vic really tries to pretend like it doesn't bother him. It does. Yeah. So you're all settled into this long journey, and uh, except for Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> All of you except Wolf are settled into this long journey. This is fine. Watching the wheat fields pass you by. And eventually, uh, all of you sort of perk up as the van makes a, a sudden turn <laughs> down a bumpy gravel road. And uh, it definitely sort of knocks you all out of your comfort because you've all been going in a straight line for as long as you can remember. The gravel road lasts a little while and eventually picks up back onto a small paved sort of byway and it winds its way through some small foothills and kind of rolls into a slightly forested little area and through these trees in the distance you see a very small gray stone wall and a wrought iron gate spooky and as you grow nearer to those of you with a view through the front window which would be mostly mason darla and jd not me. You can all see carved into the wrought iron gate. Uh, you see the name St. Vincent's Lunatic Asylum. <laughs> I see there's note taking happening, which makes me very happy. <laughs> uh, Darla leans in. She's like, oh my lord. <laughs> that, it was a different time, I guess. <laughs> Are we there? Uh, we brought you home, Mr. Wolf. <laughs> we made it? I think so. And indeed, the van comes to an unceremonious stop, and Tony, your driver, hops out, uh, goes up to the, the gate, and starts struggling a bit with a, a locking mechanism. He eventually gets it open, and the gate swings open, and he guides you all through, gets out again, very tediously closes the gate behind him, and you all can take note that he is locking it as you all go through. He jumps back in, drives you up uh, a much older but better kept drive. There's actually lines painted on it. There's a neat sidewalk. And uh, as you look about, you see your first glimpse of the St. Vincent's Lunatic Asylum. It's a large pastoral looking place. If you look into the distance, you can see small footpaths winding around its expansive grounds. There are beautiful rose gardens and a greenhouse far in the distance. But the feature, the primary focus of everyone entering this space is the large, very almost dated, but kind of quaint stone and brick building. It's a tall rectangular building that then branches into these expansive angled wings. And periodically along the sides are concrete pillars set into the brick with engravings of saints and angels and uh, little picket sort of windows in orderly groups all along the side. It is very much the early 1900s 
penitentiary style institution. And inset and above the, the line of doors at the very front is a very nicely carved name and an insignia. And set up in front is a line of large white trucks and vans. So, uh, that are, so that means we're getting here sort of late? You're getting here precisely on time for the talent. Oh, the crew the has beat you here, and all of them have set up. You see little pop-up tents and coolers and just a mess of people walking about looking very busy. There's a table with some snacks and a sort of uh, a water dispenser and a few people sort of smoking and passing the time and gossiping in front of it. It's a, a little sphere of energy and liveliness outside of this very stoic old edifice. The van drives up, deposits you outside. Tony walks around and wrenches open the door <laughs> and ushers you all out and hands you uh, directly to uh, a man in a very slim fit gray suit with a blue tie and very clean cut hair. He's rather short and very curt he introduces himself uh, without much uh, aplomb. Ah, uh, yes, hello. You're all the talent, right? Uh, that's us. Yeah. 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 All right, one, Hi. two, three, four. Okay, my name's Henry. Uh, I am your production coordinator, and today your second AD since he didn't show up. So uh, please oh, well. just follow me. Nice We're to meet you, Henry. Over to Heron, uh, I'm, James, I'm Dr. James and, Wolf. Uh, nice to meet you. Oh, yeah, pleasure to meet you. Yes, yes. Um, so this way, please. Sure, sure. Uh, I'm going to go find uh, Matthias uh, so I can get the, the scope of what we're shooting today since they're doing their thing. Excellent and, idea. So, uh, and, uh, and who's Matthias again? Uh, he's the director of cinematography. Gotcha. So the, the other four of you follow Henry over to a large white trailer with lines of, of metal staircases going into your individual dressing rooms. And you're all put through what the film industry likes to call the works. The works. You're all put into some form of costuming, whether that's something you've pre-selected or something that is brought for you. You're all given hair and makeup, and the director comes and glad hands you for a few minutes and lets you know, you know, we'll be going any time now. Well, meanwhile, Mason, you go and meet your direct superior, uh, Matthias Hansen, the director of photography. Oh, hello, hello. Hey. It's good to see you. Um, I would have liked to see you 20 minutes earlier. Oh, yeah. Uh, we would have gotten here faster, but uh, the car can't go very fast when we're being shaken to death. So I'll do my very best to not give you that kind of image. <laughs> Aha. Excuses. Just what I like to hear on day one. Yep. And uh, he walks you into the building. Uh, as you follow him, there is a large bay of steps, far more than necessary. It's very open and presentational. You walk up past uh, two lines of wrought iron railings, and you see a line of six double doors, so mm. three sets of two. Mm. Uh, the middle two are propped open, held open by these black sandbags. Yeah. And inside, you can see the buzz of your uh, fellow co-workers in the camera department and some of your compatriots in the lighting and sound departments getting their equipment set up. They're all quite far along. You are, for a crew member, very late. So what's what's the deal today, Matias? Sorry to be here late, but it is what it is. Oh, you know the usual. No power. Um, no shot list. We're already behind. But uh, other than that, completely perfect. Uh, we got a generator. Of course we have a generator. He, he gives you the dirtiest look. You've just asked a very obvious question. Mm. And he walks you, in fact, to said generator and sort of deposits you in front of your camera case. So uh, you better hurry up, yes? Mm. Uh, first shot is in 15 minutes. Good. And with really no more guidance than that, he walks away and leaves you to your own devices. Okay, well, since he's not being... Particularly directive. I'm just going to start setting up my equipment and hauler. We'll see if I can wa wave over uh, my assistant, Tina. You know, um, it just so happens that as you start to get out your camera equipment and wonder where the hell your assistant is, she materializes as if by magic. Tina, the young, uh, sort of dark-skinned of indeterminate race, but very sporty in her yoga pants with a large um, sort of hip holster full of camera gear and equipment, and a slate, the uh, the little 
a card that says the director's name and the scene number that they clack in front of every shot sort of put on her belt and she briskly walks over to you, hands you a cup of coffee and sort of rolls her eyes. Ah, man, Matthias is in a great mood today, huh? His feathers are about as ruffled as they always are. You share a, a friendly fist bump. How you been, Dina? Oh, you know, just the usual. You know, you'd think that at some point I would get a job where they got me more than a $20 hotel room, but alas, I was awoken this morning by the Ant Queen. Mm, great. Uh, what are we shooting today? All I got was Grump. Oh, you know, the usual insane asylum. You know, like, creepy past the beds and close up on the syringes. And, you know, just easy stuff. I think we are starting with a tour. And as if she says that, oh, she hands you a, a walkie-talkie. Sure. Uh, she's really got your back, Tina. She's helping you catch up. The walkie-talkie has your name on it, and uh, it's already tuned to, stay, to channel one. You can use that at any time to contact a member of the crew, should you need to. Uh, you're very familiar with how they work. Yep. And so as you put it in your ear, uh, the walkie-talkie sort of comes alive, and you get the... Uh, <laughs> The unceremonious first words out of your first, uh, di- your uh, first assistant director, who is not really a creative type. He is a taskmaster who goes by the name of Brad Blick. Um, can we have everyone to the lobby for a safety meeting, please? Mandatory safety meeting right away, right away. And Tina reaches down to her shirt and presses her her sort of mouthpiece and goes, "Copy." So. Saddle on up, all my shit. Let's get going. So, see, take in as much as I can you know, of what I've seen. But so uh, you walk up the steps, and Tina sort of trots behind you, carrying the camera and a large pelican case full of lenses. And you all sort of go in, and uh, you all are uh, at the same time. The rest of our party are being walked up from uh, their experience with hair and makeup. They're all looking mostly the same, but in slightly better clothes and with a a thin layer of powder over their faces. (laughs) You're all deposited into the entry hall where you meet a lineup of almost almost identical men. (laughs) (laughs) They're all in sort of slouchy t-shirts and ratty jeans with various kinds of Adidas shoes or work boots. Heading the helm, in the very center is your inspiring director, Ben. He looks like a 10-year-old stretched up to adult proportions. He's wearing Converse (laughs) and a very ratty t-shirt. His hair is graying at the sides, but short-cut and presentable. And he heaves out a large sigh as he goes, "Uh, Welcome to, what was the name of this one again? Paranormal Quest. So great to be here, everybody. You know, I know we're all going to have a great night tonight. Uh, You know, it's so, so great to have such an inspiring and hardworking crew, you know, behind me and carrying out all my ideas. And I really can't thank you enough for being here. And uh, as he finishes his awe-inspiring speech, he's given a very sound clap on the back by the gregarious and life-sized Eric Bergman. You all recognize Eric, particularly you, Darla, and you, Mason, from your audition interviews. <laughs> he is a six foot six, three hundred pound executive producer wearing Crocs and cargo shorts. He's got uh, a big grin on his face and a very keen look in his eyes. He slaps his director on the back and goes, "Yeah, everybody, welcome in. Let me just say, you know, I'm going to repeat exactly what Ben said." I believe in every single one of you. You wouldn't be here if I didn't, right? <laughs> and, um, yeah, you know, we're going to have a great show. If you got any concerns at all, be sure to come and, and check out uh, the production office. Our, our production manager, Anya, is an old friend of mine. She'll take good care of you. So um, don't fucking come to me, all right? <laughs> Just kidding. If you have any problems, I'm your man. Um, so uh, how about Brad? Take it away. What, what are we doing tonight? I, I've met this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have. Uh, you'll notice a few of the, the production assistants sort of like mimicking his laugh awkwardly, but most of the crew most of the crew and, and people of your ilk are very familiar with this man and you feel really no desire to, to <laughs> pat his ass any more than it already is. And so the uh, AD Brad takes uh, the reins. He is a much shorter version of these two men and much thinner. He has a sort of sunken look around his eyes. 
and a very large, very expensive watch on his wrist, which he looks at reflexively every few minutes. Right, so we're going to start today, everybody, with a tour. Uh, we have a certain perimeter that we are allowed to shoot in and outside of that. We will not go any further. This is a condemned building. It is very dangerous. The upper floors were the subject of a large fire. So we're really going to want to be careful. We have one scene we're going to shoot up there. I'll call it. And then once we're done, no one is to go upstairs. Understood? Yeah. Understood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, as always, uh, you need shoes and socks, everybody. He gives JD a look, <laughs> scans him down to his feet. Are you wearing shoes now? Yes. I'd be, I'd be in... Completely different apparel. Okay, I'd good. Be in, I'd be in my shooting apparel. He meets being. your eye very briefly with a sort of approving gaze. He knows he knows from your previous interactions that you're not one for shoes sometimes. This is, I cannot stress this enough, people. This is a condemned building. Nails, rust. You're going to need tetanus shots if you get caught with anything. We don't have an on-set medic. Uh, except for JD is your onset medic. <coughs> you're not being, you're not being paid for that, by the way. <laughs> uh, so if anyone has any issues, please go to our stunt coordinator JD. And um, you know, it's this place is full of debris. I'll get to you in a minute. Just please raise your hands. It's full of debris. Uh, you know, loose floorboards, uh, old beds, medical instruments. Please do not touch any medical instruments. He goes on for an eternity. Vic is eventually just checking his phone. Excuse me, sir. Uh, yes, Darla. Yes, hi. What about asbestos? Should we be breathing in anything here? You know, it's a good thing you bring that up, because as you look around, you notice all members of the crew are wearing <laughs> masks. Uh, but I? the but the and the AD opens his mouth. Well, I'm really glad you asked. And then uh, Eric, the executive producer, goes, no, 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 it's fine. You know, this place is cleared by the State Board of Kentucky, and uh, we have our permits from the Kentucky Film Commission, and we assure you there is absolutely no danger to filming in these premises. Uh, Dr. Wolf raises his hand. Uh, yeah, we, we talked about that earlier. You said there... This place is cleared, right? There like, you go. <laughs> That's why I brought you on. Everyone give it up for the doctor. I love That doesn't answer my question. So Darla takes part he's of her a real, shawl. Say, listen, everybody, if you weren't sure he's a real doctor, you can trust him. I, I'm a psychiatrist. So Darla so. just takes part of her shawl and, like, covers it over her face. <laughs> she's a <laughs> shit. <laughs> at, at, at which point, yeah, Vic is probably, like, finding a PA or just somebody to, to track down and, and say, hey, uh, I, can, I, can I get a face mask for between shots, please? Who are you asking? Just like a, like a, probably a production assistant or someone who doesn't look busy. Okay, well, the production assistant looks up at you with his innocent, soulful eyes and says, Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'll find you something, sir. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. I'd like to pull a band, couple bandanas out of one of my pockets, toss one to Tina and my second cameraman. Oh, and, you don't uh, have a second. We don't have the budget for oh, that. Okay. So, <laughs> Tina and just, just cover my mouth. At this point, uh, Wolf is going to kind of reach yes. over and tap him on the shoulder. Uh, hey, hey, man. Uh, it chill if I get one of those? Mm, <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you so much. All right. Can Tina's got a good one, right? Huh? I, I assumed. <clears throat> so um, as Mason passes out these uh, handkerchiefs to his chosen few, uh, Brad sort of finally wraps up his safety meeting with the uh, unceremonious phrase. So uh, don't come crying to me if you hurt yourself, okay? You've all been warned. <coughs> and so... don't come crying to me either. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, JD. It's called a Band-Aid. So where we are right now is uh, what we're going to call our base camp. Uh, so this will be where most of the crew will, will live uh, while we're not shooting. We're going to be shooting in a few different places. We're currently in the west wing of this facility. Uh, to the east <laughs> is the east wing, and that's uh, that's across the lawn. You're not going to wind up there on accident, all right? So I really don't want to see anyone in the east wing. We're not permitted to do to be there, okay? We're just going to be here in the west wing. We're going to be on this floor investigating, let's see, the ETR, 
the uh, experimental treatment rooms. Um, yeah, Ben really scoped that out and came <laughs> up with some great bits for you there. And uh, at the same time, we're going to split into a, a second unit, and the second unit will be upstairs on the fourth floor in room 423, the burned room. Ooh. And uh, that'll be the main part of our night. And then we'll wrap things up after that uh, back here underneath where we are right now in the basement where we'll do our wrap up to our investigation. All right. And everyone sort of does the group mm -hmm. nod. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he's like, all right, well, let's go. Um, second unit, that's going to be uh, Bubba. He points at the second cameraman. Uh, Bubba and Darla and Mason, we're going to take all of you upstairs. Uh, uh, James, you're going to be here, your first up, giving our intro to the building. And then and then after that, we're going to be uh, with Vic doing his intro hosting section. All right? Works for me. And that block will last us from, he looks at his, his watch and winces visibly, uh, from 9 p.m. to 11.30, Okay. And we'll meet back here at 11.35, and we'll get started on our second half of the day, okay? Yeah, okay. okay. And break. What time is it right now? Uh, in universe, it is currently 9.30. <laughs> <laughs> oh. By the way, is there cell service out here? Absolutely not. Uh, right. Uh, Vic is, uh, is going to be spending most of the time looking around for that PA who uh, who he sent off to go find him a mask. And then and is also checking his Fitbit to see to, to wonder why he hasn't gotten his steps in. <laughs> All right. Um, getting those steps in today. Let's see. What would be what would be a spot check? Or like a World of Darkness version of a perception spot check? Perception and... Is there a perception? No. Mm -hmm. uh, no, there uh, isn't one. Yeah, I would say it's probably wits... And wits or intelligence investigation. Yeah. Let's call it a wits investigation. Let's call it a wits investigation. So, um, yeah, Vic, you are welcome to make a wits investigation right. to try and find your PA. I, I really want that mask. I do not need that lung <laughs> cancer. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Mm, asbestos. Where are you? Okay. Cool. So that's four dice. First Wait, roll no, of the game. Okay. Looks like we have two successes. All right, you you actually spot your PA quite quickly. You see him at Crafty getting uh, getting a juice and slurping it down. Yay! <laughs> Does he have my mask? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can surmise that you've been blown off, and before you can <laughs> follow it up, that little prick. <laughs> before you can follow it up, uh, you are sort of carted away by Brad the AD uh, to do your sort of hosting duties alongside James Wolf and, uh, Darlin, JD and Bubba, you all are sort of wrangled together by Henry and taken over down a hallway to, uh, a sort of stairway up. Yes. I thought Mason was the best. Um, no, Mason's going to be downstairs with Vic. You guys are with Bubba. Okay. So let's see. Let's do, um, let's do you guys first, uh, since, uh, Wolf is going to get a packet of information. Oh, and uh, thanks. Yeah, here you go. Um, so, um, yeah, just, uh, you know, scan that over and do your thing. Um, we're just going to do a history of the building. We're going to do a, one here in, a, in the, the main area, base camp. And then we're just going to go outside and do some establishings. Okay. Uh, so I kind of start thumbing through it. Do I see anything interesting or is it all just kind of basic stuff? I mean, it's pretty standard stuff. It was built in 1907 for the care and protection of the mentally ill. Uh, it was initially a place for the wealthy to send their loved ones for um, really internment more than care. And then as the institutional system picked up steam, it was expanded. The, uh, you see that the East Wing is the original construction and the West Wing where you currently reside is an older or a newer building. And you can see that reflected around you. Uh, if you were to look around and take in your surroundings, you would see a fairly modern medical environment circa 1980 or so. There's plastic and glass and, you know, modern gurney chairs. And um, you can see that most of the quote unquote activity is centered around the East Wing. No. Oh. Okay. But uh, essentially the interesting part to you is that the building during the period of deinstitutionalization in the 80s 
uh, really clung on. It became a private hospital for about 10 years or so, and it hung on straight into the 90s, where it eventually did peter out due to a lot of unfortunate happenings, namely a fire upstairs. On your sheet, you see that the section in fire is in italics and it's highlighted. Um, they want you to cover that. Yeah, uh, the, the fire had no, if, as you look closer, you see the fire had no clear origins. The police were unable to determine the source, but it completely demolished the third and fourth floors of the building. And uh, all attempts to renovate those floors were abandoned for various reasons. And um, to this day, they remain sealed off, and, and the uh, west end of the hospital resumed function for another four years before the whole facility was eventually shut down and cleared out. So you figure that's enough to go on. Okay, yeah, so nothing, nothing really too shocking. It's just kind of an old building. Creepy shit happens. Who wrote this? Oh, Henry. <laughs> Not surprising. They make the PA do it. So Wolf is just kind of going to thumb through it a bit and... Straighten up. So, uh, by now, the... Uh, uh hey, uh, where do you guys want me again? Uh, yes, yes, Vic. Yeah, um, I'm right here. Oh, so you're gonna sorry. be there just to be a mouthpiece for the audience, and then we'll do another shot later where you do your whole introduction thing. I don't know. Ben told me you're right. Ben, is it, have you, have you rehearsed that? Yeah. You hear him. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see him. You just hear the sort of yes emanating down the hall from where you surmise the monitor is. Uh, hey, quick question. Um, my, a little off topic. Is, is this our first time filming as a crew? Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is your as a crew in the story. This is your first time working together. But you have been through the audition process. You have not met each other before, but each of you have had a consultation with Eric, the producer, and Ben, the director, and you've sort of gone over your roles, which I suppose I should clarify. James Wolfe is the sort of science figure. He's meant to be there to give the, the episode a certain scientific credence and to introduce uh, the history of the place because he's wearing a lab coat and it sounds official when he says <laughs> it. JD is brought in for his son Acumens, but he is sort of a co-host and he is there mostly to spice up an episode. If they don't find anything really interesting, mm -hmm. then they are expecting JD to provide them with some stunt work. Vic was brought on the show as the show's host, a uh, former child star. He comes with a certain prestige that got the whole thing funded. Otherwise uh, known as a dot of fame. <laughs> otherwise known <laughs> as one dot of fame. Or just Darla being a C-list celebrity. The psychic who does the sort of bridging to the beyond sections. And of course, Mason is a cameraman shooting all of it happening. <laughs> okay, awesome. So, um... Wolf is going to straighten out his lab coat a little bit, buff out the chest, make sure he looks cool, and then he's going to approach Vic. He's going to be, hey, uh, yo, you're uh, Vic, right? Victor? What oh, do you prefer? Uh, Vic is fine. And uh, by the way, uh, sorry about the whole uh, just seating situation in the car. <laughs> hey, bro, it's okay. You know, shit happens. Uh, hey, sorry I beat your ass at Spork. <laughs> oh, uh, Spork, I know... Uh, what is that? Is that some sort of... What is that? Oh, it was the cell phone game. I, you were playing it. I was playing it. it. It had that little thing that kept updating. I kept getting a higher score than you. Yeah? No? Oh, well, okay. Uh, I guess I was just trying that out. My, my niece sends me stuff. Oh. <laughs> anyway. All right, uh, bro. Yeah. yeah. What, what was your name again? Uh, James Wolf. D Dr. James Wolf. You can call me Wolf or whatever. All right, Wolf. Uh, ni uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> it's Again. nice to meet you too, like proper. So, um, Wolf takes out the file and he kind of thumbs through it a little bit. I've been going over this thing. They literally just handed it to me, but uh, nothing too fancy. There was a fire. It was a mental hospital. Then it was a hospital hospital. Uh, there's been some quote unquote paranormal activity around the uh, East Wing. Or was it the West Wing? Let me double check. Uh, yep, yep, it right. was the East uh, yeah, Wing. Yeah, I can work with that. Yeah. Uh, does it say anything in, in there about uh, about these uh, about these rose bushes and stuff? This place looks pretty well manicured for something that's abandoned. Oh, uh, it's not really technically abandoned, from what I can tell. I think it was just kind of, like, Ugh. left. I don't know. Any explanation? Uh, who do you ask? Well, uh, I, I thumbed through the, through the dock, and then uh, if I could... Uh, who, who's around who would be uh, knowledgeable that? Actually, you mentioned Henry made it. Uh, is Henry around? Henry is sadly upstairs with the other unit. But uh, now that you have it in your hand, 
um, and you're flipping through with that intent, mm -hmm. uh, you do notice at the very end it talks about the more recent history of the building. And you see that the building is currently maintained by the... Um, it's a... Sorry, just give me a second. Take your time. We'll edit this part out, maybe. <laughs> Awkward pauses. Yeah, you can see that it is currently owned by the St. Vincent Hospital Historic Site. It's a private sort of maintenance company with uh, some subsidies from the local government. And it does have a caretaker that comes by every once in a while. And in fact, uh, had you been there earlier, you would have seen her let the crew into the location. Okay. I'll make a note of that. When we were driving with Tony, did he have any relation to the caretakers or the original family? Not that you could have known. He just happened to have a key. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. he, he was tasked with uh, transporting all of you to the site, and so yeah. he had all he needed to get you there. Yeah, yeah. he would have gotten the key from production, I'm sure. Right. Uh, so looking around, uh, just sort of somewhat absentmindedly handing, uh, handing Wolf back the, uh, the docket. Oh, thanks. Uh, he starts looking around, taking everything in. Uh, seeing what would make for some interesting shots or just something that could really spice up an intro. Sure. So, so um, um, yeah. I, go ahead. <laughs> sorry, I interrupted you. You're good. So, Victor, as you look around at the space, you see initially when you entered, you noticed only the stacks of boxes and gear and the people milling about. Now that the work has begun, it's become more sedate, the room is cleared out, and you see behind the plastic tables and all of the detritus of a working film set, a rather charming waiting room with a circular desk and a bay of 90s computers lined up, several monitors, a large uh, column with some decorative tile work and some signs pointing to different hallways and different buildings. Behind that, you see it's sort of a, a square entry hall, and in the center of this circular console and around both sides, the room kind of wraps around to a space hidden behind, and on either side, a pair of doors that uh, go into a sort of unseeable direction. Uh, okay. All right. That is that is an awful lot to take in. <laughs> the, uh, uh, so on the, uh, are, is there any ominous room name uh, on those on those signs? Is there some, is there something like, like like super mad wing or uh, or just like danger area? Well, you see one that. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I've never <laughs> been inside of a mental hospital before. I mean, yeah, but I they wouldn't know. have that. We get real crazy this way. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you asked, though. There is a sign on the far left side of the room, the opposite side you're currently standing, that does say Suicide Watch. Mm. All mm. right. That's sad. That, that, that can make for, a, make for a good shot. And just I'll, a room this big, is it is it vacant enough to where there's like some sort of echo? Definitely. Cool. I'm going to want to use that. So, all right. All right. Cool. That's that's about all I need. So Mason, are you uh, ready to go? Are you here with them? Yeah, I've, I've been waiting on these two schmucks to stop talking to each other for a while now. Let's go. <laughs> I'm ready when you are. Come on. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, should I make a uh, roll for this? <laughs> Sorry. Wolf was in a porn. Well, uh, Brad begins to, to <laughs> no, fill stop, in where stop, he stop, stop you, everything. I think... Wolf is just red. Right that now. was not in character. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Can you imagine if you just knew that coming in? <laughs> how, how would you know but, uh, that? Yeah, so, so um, Brad, it, this is a point when you, you, Vic, know that your director really should be stepping in to give you all directions, but you don't see that ass budge from his director chair. So um, this is a chance where you can sort of take the reins if you'd like. Okay, I get to do some artistic direction. All right. We're outside still. We are inside the main lobby of the West Wing. Okay. All right. Uh, hey, uh, hey uh, what was your name again? Mason. Mason. All right. Uh, I, I think I have an idea. Can we do, like, some sort of tracking shot where you, where you have me uh, walking, probably do, like, you know, a rule of thirds thing where I cross from one side of the screen to the other and get, like, this, this like, suicide watch uh, sign in, the, in there while I'm just kind of, you know, doing the intro. Do you think that you could do that? 
Does it seem feasible? What I need you, to... you look at Tina. Um, this is a so when you are shooting, it is a team operation. Yeah. Since you carry the camera and you figure out where you need to be physically to get the shot he's describing, and you're totally able to do that, but the focus is being controlled by Tina, your assistant. Mm. And she sort of looks at you and looks at Vic and, and gets a sort of glimmer in her eye. It sounds like a cool shot, and she just nods and says, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we're right. good. Just How you, wanna, you just want to, are you going to come in the door? Just keep some lights on me. It'll make me look beautiful. That's all I need. <laughs> I'll get more lights. <laughs> oh, <laughs> snap. <laughs> right. So uh, the light guys, you know, jump to and, and make quick work of, of the additional lighting. They put lots of, of diffusion on it. It is the softest, most beautiful light you've ever seen. It makes your pores look like baby angels. <laughs> 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 and you're all ready to go. All right, just let me know when you're rolling. I can I can get started. All right, anytime. all right. Quiet on set. We ready to go? Okay. Uh, roll camera. Camera rolling. Roll sound. Sound speeding. All right, Ben, when you're ready. And from deep down the hallway, the most unenthused. And action. Uh, Vincent uh, starts wa- walking into frame as he, uh, as he begins speaking. The well-manicured lawn of St. Vincent's Lunatic Asylum holds I sorry one more time all right cut cut it's okay Vic don't no nerves man yeah that's it breathe it's it just out. first day just first day yeah you got this man you're a professional I believe in you I know thank you Ben <laughs> all right quite a uh. set settle settle this is this is Brad all right and action the well manicured area that surrounds St. Vincent's lunatic asylum does little to hide the decrepit interior of this madhouse. <laughs> I, I'm gonna give a little grace for you guys. Yes, uh, right. in the delivery. Please do. We are making this up. So, yeah. well, how about you roll a? Oh goodness, how about a presence and expression <laughs> roll? Am I doing we'll, so bad? We'll say we'll, roll we'll, we'll, we'll let the dice find out. Nah, sweetie, you're perfect. <laughs> we'll we'll find find out. Out. We just roll presence. those dice. Presence and what? Presence and expression. expression. Presence and expression. Great. I and I am lights. acting, so does that? Uh, yeah, you get an extra dice for your specialty. Okay, so that's six plus seven. so seven dice. Yeah, so I think how we'll handle any kind of performance in this campaign is you guys get the lines out. It's okay if you stutter, if you have to think, and then we'll do a roll to determine how smoothly your character delivers. <laughs> that's uh, so we roll first, then we perform it. Yeah, that's uh, that that seems fair, right? Yeah, yeah. Though you know, I kind of like that you guys would have to to make up how your character. Fumbles. I kind of like that actually. We might do that. It's like, what if I just absolutely fuck up? We'll do that from here on. Yeah. Or. <laughs> If I get a crit fail, can I just fart on camera? Yes. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Wow, that's a disappointingly low amount. Uh, that's that's. Uh, are seven successes? No, everything <laughs> just eight one success. And above. Is that a ten? Or is no, that a that's nine? A, that's a six. A six. So that's one six. success. One success out of seven dice. Got well, it. it's a good thing, dear boy, that all you needed was one. It's, good. It's not a stirring performance, but it's good enough. All right, sure. And uh, you do a couple more takes for safety. You yeah. can roll those if you really care. But uh, we, then we move I just, on. I just kind of want to do another take, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so then we'll move on to uh, Dr. Wolf's uh, opportunity to give the audience a, a view of this sad, sad location. Uh, hey, before I go into this, um, I have the striking looks merit. Uh, does that apply here? Hmm. Yeah, I, I know. It's really useful for persuasion most of the time, but, you know, I'll give it to you. I think it, it applies. Okay, cool. Uh, awesome. Oh, um, I have specialty in expression jargon. Uh, does that apply here, or should I just kind of roll without it? Yeah, I'm going to say so. Cool. Uh, provided, provided that when you say what your character says, you have some jargon in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that's totally fair. <laughs> if you don't get it in there, you don't get the dice. <laughs> no, Doc. Doc, you want to take this shot over by the suicide watch shine, or do you have any preferences here? Oh, um, yeah, I, I can do it by there. That's fine. Sure. Okay. And get some shading in here. Get him that fucking grim dark shit. Oh, uh, yeah. Sh- yeah, just, um, so, okay. uh, uh, you you don't see Matthias around, which does make you the authority on, on mm-hmm. the visuals. So, uh, yeah, you're welcome to move things around. As you oh, like. I, I got two successes. 
Two successes. All right. So you do pretty well. You don't do amazing, but you do solidly better than Vic. Cool. <laughs> uh, should I act that out? <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, we believe the spiritual energy within this place has been uh, emulsified by the uh, pyrokinetic energy left by the fire. We also believe that this place, and he is doing a lot of the talking with his hands, he's has furrowed eyebrows, and he's looking very professional right now. Yes, we believe the long, sordid history, starting from a mental hospital, a, sanit- a sanitarium, really just emits these negative chakras. Ben calls cut and stands up, and he goes... That was great, everybody. Moving on. Uh, did you want me to do that again? Nope. You're, okay. You feel he is such an uninspired individual <laughs> that really you feel a little it. a little flutter of excitement just that he used the word good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, are we done? Uh, and uh, on that... Uh, sorry, can I get a little scene with Vic? Cool. Hey, uh, Vic, you did... Uh, that was awesome. Uh, thanks. Uh, you did. You did good. You you did really good. No, thanks. I mean, I I I've never really acted yeah, before. A, he, he just sort of leaves it at that. Uh. Not, just just trying to salvage the what's left of his ego. So um the <laughs> the crew sort boys. of. I'm sorry. Sorry. It's like you still keeping score, boys. <laughs> <laughs> so the crew moves on. Um, Mason and the camera people uh, start moving on to their next shots that they have uh, planned, and Ben starts telling everybody what to do. Which means that, uh, Wolf and Vic, you have a few minutes here to check out the place if you want to. Okay. Uh, uh, you want to you wanna just come and take a look around, see if we can find something else creepy to talk about? Uh, sure, totally. All right, cool. Uh, so... So, investigation checks. Yeah. I think I already... I can do that. Wits investigation, yes, All sir. Right. For similar reasons, I'd also like to look around. Yeah, sure. Um, so you can delegate, if you'd like, to your department and then take the time to look around as well with this investigation. Um, okay. okay, one success. Uh, have we decided where the shot's going to be yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all been decided. I did and, uh, you're oh, actually, I got three you successes. You the camera awesome. over to where they oh, want no, it, and you're pretty much done zero. for the okay. next 15 or so. I'm just going to have a look around then. No, I just set up just zero. Yes. I don't know if you Dice. Uh, Tens always four, explode. Uh, zero? Okay. Either way. <laughs> no, no, no. Either way. Um, that's fine. Uh, one success for Vic. Out loud. Five. Five. <laughs> Audio <laughs> medium, dude. Uh, no, I do I do have the trained observer merit. That, but I think that's like a retrospect sort of thing, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, that's something yeah. when you look back, you can discover more details about a situation. Got it. Cool. Uh, well, then, uh, we'll start with Mr. Wolf. Awesome. So, um, Wolf, you, as you sort of take in the space, you sort of get this sense that these computers on the desks, you see one of them has a little green light in the corner, like it has power. Oh, um, okay. Okay. So Wolf is going to kind of go over there, and uh, I guess we'll poke at it. Uh, it bings on. Oh! And um, a very interest to you, it's uh, Amazon.com. <laughs> <laughs> Wolf is just kind of chuckling to himself. <laughs> Figured the PAs would cover this up better. And um, with your three dots, you notice... It's the current build of Amazon. This isn't some, like, 90s screen cap or a frozen screen or something. This is a working computer that is accessing the current internet. Okay, so we get internet here. That's uh, weird. They are looking up bandages and antiseptic. (sighs) Bandages and antiseptic. Okay, so someone was using this for, like, medical stuff? All right. So Wolf kind of chuckles at that, clicks around a little bit. Cool. This is very aesthetic. So, uh, Vic, with your one success, you're like, whoa, this place is legitness. <laughs> I will say, okay. Sounds like Vic. <laughs> I almost choked my dad Coke. <laughs> uh, Vic has kind of an ulter- ulterior motive. He uh, he immediately needs to reassert dominance. And he is looking for a way to frighten his coworkers. Okay, okay. Would you um, would you like to make a follow-up role to that? Uh, sure. Such an awful <laughs> douchebag. Yeah, I love this it. Is your, this is your star, star. He has an ego to feed. 
no, no additional successes. Just you look one. around and you're just like, nope. I have, I don't know. I, I mean, I could sneeze Shit. on them. <laughs> I could just hide behind a pillar and jump out, go boo. No ideas whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you, Mason, when the uh, light on this this one monitor kicks on, it really catches your attention, and you sort of walk over to watch as, as Wolf checks out the computer. Hey, any idea what this is about? Not in the slightest. Oh, okay. Uh, that's so weird. So uh, you sort of looking. scan the desk when you get closer, and what strangely catches your eye is that um, one of the drawers on the desk is slightly open, and inside you can see a little glint of something shiny. I'm going to gently push the doctor away from the desk and oh, sorry. slowly open the drawer. All right, so uh, you very gradually open the door and... It's very dark in this room. Only the lights used for shooting are on. You can barely see inside. But you do catch a glint of something under a pile of papers. And flashlight? Hmm? Just kick on a flashlight real quick. Oh, you have a flashlight. Wonderful. Now you have a, a fantastically lit view of this drawer. It has is full of yellow papers and crumpled up post-it notes, pens with very outdated logos and font on them. At the very bottom... A little copper key. Hmm. And taped to the front of that key is a sticker that says SB18. Huh. You might want to, you or Vic might want to find this, Doc. It'd be pretty good. I don't know what we're going to do with the computer, though. That seems kind of, is it SB or SB? SB as in boy. Okay. That sounds kind of counter to the whole, this place is old and decrepit sort of deal. <laughs> yeah, um... I I don't know. I thought maybe they were going to explode or something. Maybe have a ghost pop out. Uh, screamer video. So, uh, what's it say again? SB-18? Yes, SB-18. Okay, yeah. So, um, wait. Uh, I got a quick question. Probably a room number? Yeah. Uh, did Mason pick up the key? Uh, I haven't reached for it yet. I've just kind of penciled the papers out of the way. I'm not interested in getting bit by some spider that this rundown place has hidden in there. <laughs> All right, so Mason, you click on your camera and you film some great, you know, a great little segment about him finding this mysterious key. Yep. Um, Wolf, when you're digging around in that uh, drawer, please give me a wits investigation. Okay, wits investigation. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I got... Three successes. Thank God, I was terrified of what happened. Secretly, a bear trap in there. <laughs> <laughs> Clack! Hey, 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 hey! hey. Wolf is a bear, technically. <laughs> <laughs> right on. What was the name of the room number again? Or S B B eighteen. S as in snake. B as in Bartholomew. Bartholomew. A bear trap. B stands for bear trap. (laughs) Bear trap. That was my nickname in college. Super bear (laughs) trap. Hey ho. All right. So you go, you do the segment. As you're doing the segment, you feel something under the papers, and it feels like cloth. And that really snags your attention. But you finish the take, you get it clean, and then once the cameras stop rolling, you pull out a sort of a torn scrap of hospital bedding streaked Ooh. on one edge with brown, disgusting, dried blood. Oh. Ugh. And scratched on it is the, as a message. Would you like to respond before I read it? Um, not really. I guess I'm just wondering, uh, does, does anyone notice this? Am I alone? That's a good question. Is anyone else paying attention once the cameras have stopped rolling? Uh, I would... Uh, yeah, I don't see why I'd be looking away. I'd probably just start the cameras rolling again. Vic is probably just looking at the ceiling going, Dang, this place is spooky. <laughs> <laughs> that does seem to be his yeah, M.O. This right place now. does do a spook. Yeah, 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 uh, if I could notice him rummaging around in the drawer again, uh, probably just kick the little camera light on. Yeah, I won't make you roll it. for this. If you are if you feel like you were paying attention... No. If you feel like you were paying attention, then you see this happen. Sure. All right. So, Wolf... Reading this uh, hastily scratched note, you see the words. Yeah? 
it whispers to people and they become its slaves and lovers and they're not workers like they say they're just disguised as them they're still here and i can't get them all but i got their leader i got the monster who leads them it's in the walls i would like to kill it but it has whispered to me that i cannot and i know that it is right there is a space as though it was interrupted and not quite on the same line the note continues i have to go as he's reading this and he just like is as it gets creepier and creepier vic sees his opportunity runs up and just slams his hands on the counter goes ah okay like i'm totally down for playing this out i'm totally down to see where this goes but uh wolf doesn't scare easily he he doesn't believe in any of this he thinks this is all show (laughs) okay sure no that's totally fair if your character is not a super like scared like a person who's who's prone to reacting then i think it's fine that someone else should roll for it jokes on you i have a dot in intimidation Ooh. okay oh my Okay. Uh I have So so would this be uh would this be expression intimidation? Yeah, we'll call it that. Okay. Versus resolve composure? Yeah, I've, I've... versus yeah, resolve composure on Wolf's part. Okay, that sounds fair. Roll. Oh, oh man, that one's cocked. Oh, you can roll it again. Okay. Only cuz you haven't succeeded at anything today. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, one success. I got two. But two were seven, so it was close. Eh, not close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Blam. Boom. So, bruh. <laughs> so, I guess Wolf's just going to look up and be like, oh, hey, Vic. <laughs> hey, Wolf. Did I get that? Yes. Yeah, what'd you find? Oh, uh, I found this... Uh, l- I found this letter. I don't think it's real, but it's uh, kind of spooky. It reads like a creepypasta sort of thing. <laughs> cryptic, cryptic, no- <clears throat> cryptic notes. Let me take a look at that. <laughs> are we filming? Do you need to do the voice? Well, are we rolling. Filming? Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> cryptic notes. Dr. Wolf, let me take a look at that. He says, reaching out a hand. Uh, Wolf hands it over. He- Aggressive pain. Aggressive pain. <laughs> uh, oh boy, I get to read it. No. Yeah. Whispers to people, and they become its slaves and lovers. And they're not workers like they say. They're just disguised as them. Dr. Wolf, what do you make of this? Uh, Bob, uh, uh, wait, are we actually rolling right now? Yeah? Yes. Yes. Okay, so Wolf kind of clears his throat, and he looks a little wide-eyed. He was definitely not prepared for that. Uh, I believe we are being reached from the other side, possibly through the act of, uh, Kinetic synesthesia. The, uh, the... I'm sorry, I got nothing. So, I thought you were going to go on longer. <laughs> so that, you say my... that in, in your actual voice on camera. <laughs> Hold on. I thought you were going to go on longer. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, you're good. That's that. that. That is what it appears to be. Let's keep this close by. Perhaps it will lead to something, something bigger. Something unknown. Editing nightmare. Editing nightmare. (laughs) (laughs) Why are you guys complaining? I'm the guy who has to do all that. And so uh, at this point, uh, you see that the majority of the crew, you know, the director, the producer, they know they've got what they need. They're all, it's getting a little late for them. They're going to go home. And for the rest of the night, all of you are just going to be shooting what they call, in big quotation marks, (laughs) B-roll. what the rest of you would consider the rest of the show. (laughs) But they pretty much entrusted you all to basically run around and scare each other until the end of the night, and they don't care anymore. So from here on out, guys, it's just going to be you guys and a sort of splinter crew. It's mostly just you guys in the building. So with that wrapped up, you all continue sort of shooting stuff and filler and whatever. We're going to move upstairs and join uh, JD, Darla, and Bubba. Bubba, the best NPC. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Bubba leads the way up this rickety staircase. He is an uh, absolutely massive Hawaiian man with a gentle demeanor. And uh, his shirt is a sort of striped New York Yankees faux baseball jersey. And he carries a very large camera as though it weighed nothing. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make sure that Bubba goes up the stairs before me because if they can hold Bubba, yeah, yeah. If, 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 if the <laughs> stairs in the building that almost burned down can hold a Bubba, I think we're all we're good. Uh, pretty He's good. gonna be like our poking <laughs> stick. You know, good, like... good structure test. <laughs> And uh, Bubba is just sort of, you know, very peacefully creaking up the stairs mm. one at a time. <laughs> Does Bubba look nervous? Not <laughs> at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bubba, in fact, looks blitzed as hell. He looks like the chillest motherfucker. He has been through hell and back, and he does not care Bubba's anymore. not faced. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <clears throat> picking up the rear of your small party is Henry, who looks completely pissing himself. He does not <laughs> want to be here. He really wants to just go home. And, in fact, uh, it turns out that no one thought to hire a second unit sound guy, so he's now decked out in uh, a mixer, uh, sort of slung ba- mixer backpack and a big boom mic, <laughs> which he's, like, clumsily banging against staircases and walls oh. as he negotiates the rickety and, and cluttered stairway. So it's like I'm back in film school. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wasn't trained for this. Oh, well, I think I mean, most people weren't trained for this, but, you know. Yeah, sweetie, if you hit me with that thing, I, I'm gonna slap the shit out of you. Sorry. I, I, I will endeavor not to, Miss Darla. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you got the miss this time. Well, he's learning. <laughs> he was corrected. <laughs> So you all reach the top of the stairs, and uh, at this point, Bubba stops and sort of huffs a little bit, looks around, it's very dark, and uh, he sort of fishes out a flashlight from his satchel and pulls out an actually rather large, one of the ones that runs on D batteries, big flashlight, and uh, he sort of offers it to Darla. Oh, thank you, sweetie. And, uh, but he does not continue walking forward, and as Henry reaches the top, it becomes clear that uh, only Henry knows where you're supposed to go. <laughs> and he doesn't look eager to leave the party. <laughs> you all stand there a bit awkwardly. <laughs> just, just all looking at Henry. And Henry just goes, ah, fine. And he goes first. He leads you down what seems to be an endless hallway. You can surmise that, uh, this the staircase you've just gone up it borders the square central atrium and you are going down one of the angled wings which as you go deeper and you know shadows flicker through different doorways and reveal dilapidated rooms and and rusted old hospital beds sheets hanging from rings and torn to pieces graffiti on certain walls and windows covered up in plywood and cardboard. It really does start to play with your mind a little, walking down the seemingly endless hallway. And as you reach the end, you see it end. And as you go and turn the corner, another equally long hallway. And and you can kind of surmise from what you've seen before that some of these doorways, in fact, lead to still more hallways. And it's almost labyrinthine in its construction. Uh, JD's gonna go ahead and pull out his K2 meter. It's, <laughs> okay. it's, it's become a kind of a reaction for him whenever he starts to get a little bit creeped out. <laughs> He's just gonna kind of pull it out of one of the pockets on his filming vest that he wears with all of his equipment in it. So the K2 meter is a small black device. It has a line of three um, lights on it: a green one, a yellow one, and a red. And depending on different electronic frequencies that it detects, it will blink a certain kind of light based on a low reading being green, uh, a higher than average reading being yellow, and a very high reading being red. So Darla is going to sort of hold that flashlight pretty tight, (laughs) because it's a very spooky room, Uh, and she's going to shine it in all of the sort of of dark corners, just to make sure there's not like a raccoon or something. (laughs) Uh, Bubba has you repeat the process a few times. It makes for some really good shots. And you all sort of grab some B-roll as as you make your way to what turns out to be the very furthest end of, of this wing of the hospital. The further in that you get, the darker the walls get. As you first came up the stairs, you see the remnants, tools, and stacks of wood of a construction crew coming to repair the place. 
once you turn this corner and you go really into the depths of this wing, you, no one has yet uh, achieved renovation of this part. The walls are still burnt, the old wallpaper peeling off the edges and singed, and you can sort of guess that people really don't come here. It's all layered in just cakes of dust. And yet, Henry continues leading you ever onward until you reach the back corner in a room with a label on the wall that says 423. Uh, Henry, are we, uh, is this still in the area we are supposed to be in? Oh, yes, yes, this is right where we're supposed to be. Um, so, and he just with the tips of his fingers just shoves the door and it creaks open to reveal a small, um, residential cell. It's about eight feet by ten feet, really just wide enough to hold the old institutional uh, metal hospital bed with a very thin mattress, some bloody torn sheets on it, and large, heavy restraints, like were, would have been used in a very old mental hospital. There's a large strap around where a waist would be, where a person lying there. Uh, there are big, thick manacles at the top and at the bottom for hands and feet, and around where a head would be a very sort of awkwardly shaped piece, which clearly is meant to go over a mouth and muffle it. And then next to it, a small desk and a, a rickety chair, which is on its side, since one leg has been ripped off at some point. The whole wall, every all four walls of the room, are absolutely just burnt to a crisp. Except for a small little square opening at the very back of what was once a window, and is now simply an open cavity to the outside world. Wind whistles in through it and sort of blows your hair gently as the door comes open, and you just get this overpowering smell of coal and must and death. And Henry <clears throat> sort of looks at you all and goes, hey, you have fun now. Hey, so do we know if, like, who, like do we have a name for whoever is in this room? Oh, no, or... no one ever knew. Okay. You know, and in fact, and Henry, you all may not know, uh, wrote the packet that Wolf had. So he is a veritable encyclopedia of information. And uh, he's very happy to tell you, yeah, they're, um, they're never really sure the, what started the fire, but they do think it started here, which is um, why it's had some really crazy legends. People say they hear, like, like animals in the walls and, like, like, the patients used to have these crazy dreams. And, I mean, they were on a lot of psychotic medication, but they used to have these dreams about being eaten alive. And he, he kind of gets a manic glare in his eye, like, like you have found the ghost enthusiast under the terrified <laughs> production uh, coordinator. Uh, what, what do you mean by eaten alive? Oh, by, like, rats and spiders and bats. I mean, it was all kinds of things. This one patient swore it was cats, like feral cats. And he nods his head as he points with every word. He's suddenly very animated. Well, I mean, feral cats will eat just about anything, so I'm not surprised. Oh, yeah. Um. So, so anyway, we're just going to do a bit here and... Feral cats that eat you and make Jojo. <laughs> we sit down too long. <laughs> so, yeah, we're just going to do... Uh, ben said he really wanted someone laying in the bed. Um, and then just some, like, psychic woo stuff. And then we can go back down to base camp and get the hell out of here. Yeah, so I'm going to volunteer JD for the laying in the bed part. <laughs> yeah, I kind of figured that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> whenever, whenever they say, someone... <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know what that means. <laughs> but yeah, I'll do all that sack of uh, sorry. I'll do all that sack of shit above you if you want. Maybe... JD walks over to the bed and touches it to see if there's anywhere sticky you would like to avoid. <laughs> um, it's not so much sticky as overwhelmingly dusty. Yeah. You get the I mean, feeling that if you were to scrape all the dust away, there might be something sticky. Yeah, well he's okay, that's fine. That works. <laughs> so he didn't want to roll anything, you know, diseased. Lay down a blanket first. <laughs> well, that, that wouldn't look right. <laughs> so 
so Bubba sort of, uh, Bubba hoists his camera up on his shoulder and he kind of gets it running. He's, he's actually uh, a pretty skilled cameraman to the, such an extent where he's pulling his own focus. It's just him and you guys here. And he sort of gives Henry and gives you all a nod like, all right, go on ahead. Henry, uh, you all immediately notice, does not enter the room. He sort of just stands outside, <laughs> stands outside. with the boom pole just pointing inside the doorway. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, it is small enough that once you're all in the room, the door takes up most of the walking area, and Bubba sort of regretfully <laughs> hinges it closed uh, with just enough of a gap for the, the boom mic to, to come in. Gotcha. Um, should I do a read of the room? Who's going first? Uh, Henry, uh, you see just like a sliver of Henry's face through the door and he goes, yeah, yeah, let's do Darla first. <laughs> All right, Henry. Uh, <laughs> um, I want to try, um, so Darla is kind of only sort of a psychic. <laughs> um, she... Uh, may have once had an actual ghost experience, and she might have some latent talent, but it is not actually like like something that can, she can do all the time. Um, so I want to do a role for this merit I have called Sense for the Strange, um, which is basically is it Eye for the Strange? It's Eye for the Strange. Sorry, it's Eye for the Strange, um, and it will allow me to sort of pick up some vibes from this room. Well, JD's going to say that. Why don't you go ahead and do all your like voodoo juju, and then I'll come in with the with the tech, and we'll see if we can get anything on that. We could try the IR. We could go with the thermal. There could be some something we could get from any of that, and then we can yeah go from there. Oh, I like that. I like that. Henry says all that stuff you just said makes sense to me. <laughs> um. So, what do you want me to roll for uh, Eye for the Strange? So for Eye for the Strange, um, it is it is a social role because it is a psychic sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's do your presence and a cult plus your unseen sense. That's not bad for me. I also have that one. So, <clears throat> so I'll kind of flip around Bubba and out the door. <laughs> it's a narrow squeeze, but you make it. Join, join Henry by the crack of the door. It would be two successes. Okay. So you um, you take a read of the room, you have your hands out in front of you, and your bangles sort of clink gently against one another in the wind. Oh, yeah. They So the, the girls in hair and makeup and wardrobe have definitely played up the psychic aspect of her. And so she's wearing, like, like a, a Stevie Nicks-style shawl. It's got, like, a floral pattern and, like, black fringe on it. Um, and she's got about 30 rings on her fingers, all of them turquoise. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and a big fuck-off cross on her chest. It's like rhinestone. That's the first time I've heard fuck-off used to describe a cross. <laughs> <laughs> it's very southern. It is. Uh, that could double as a weapon in some states. It's got Jesus right. <laughs> Nestled lovingly in her cleavage. Yeah, in her her in between her big old titties. It's stuck there. Um, so tig old bitties. Tig old bitties. So what did you get? Uh, so I got two successes. Right. So you spread your arms out and you you take a read of the room, and you know strangely, you actually hear something. Ooh. Oh. It's sort of it's strange because it sounds very far away. But the room is very small. And you, you just, you have this insane sense that this voice is right here, even though it sounds like it is on the other side of the hallway. And it doesn't say anything that you can quite make out. It's just a sort of low, Mariel, Mariel, what are you doing here? And it's this very sort of creepy female voice. So she's, she's like freaking out a little bit on the inside because she normally doesn't hear anything. But she's she just sort of like puts this like dreamy expression on her face and she like catches her light, you know, when the camera light. And she like, she like positions her head towards the camera and she goes, what was that, sweetie? You're going to have to speak up a little louder. I can't hear you. Oh, oh. All right, 
And uh, so when you say that, make me another um, unseen sense roll, please. Oh, shit. For this, for the same. So the same yes, role. presence, occult, and unseen sense. Oh, Plus any relevant shit. skill specialties. You mean sense for the strange? I for the strange. Sorry. So one. One. All right. Um, you. The voice sounds closer, but you still can't make out what it's saying. It's just a sort of female breathy moan. Is there is there a direction for it? Yeah, it's sort of back and to the right. It's like behind you. Which direction am I facing? Am I facing towards the window or towards, towards the window? The, the door. So I will. Uh, um. So she she turns back towards the noise, um, and um, she she looks out I guess towards the door, and she's like she's like counting on Bubba to follow her. You know? Yeah, um, he's got you. Uh, and she goes, I'm over here, sweetie. Why don't you come a little closer? Um, all right, you don't really sense any kind of response to that, but that doesn't mean you can't play it up with your expression roll. Um, so I'm going to move towards the door. Like, I'm going to really telegraph it so everybody knows to get the fuck out of the way. Um, and I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna like hands up in this like like loose like posture where she's like trying to like you know how in superhero movies when you have like people that do magic or whatever like and they jellyfish have their, net they have their jellyfish net hands up <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she has her hands up like towards the door and she like goes through it and into the hall beyond uh, she. She plays it up. She's like, I'm over here. I just need you to come over to me and talk to me a little bit. I want to know who you are, and I want to help you. Roll to see if Henry's paying attention. You are right on the money. <laughs> oh, shit. Wow. Henry is paranoid and freaked out of the shit, so he actually does see you coming through. <laughs> it's still a pretty big unplanned move, so you catch just a hint of boom in the shot, but he clears... Like like lightning, he just like ducks just under the like the lens and out the other side, and he's like clanging up on the wall like Spider Man, like, <laughs> and he has this look on his face like, God, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of imagine him with this boom in his mouth, you know, like <laughs> that, that was a, a four successes on a dexterity wow. and wits roll <laughs> for for poor Henry. <laughs> I'm over in the corner. I'm just like. Doing a soft clap for Henry. Yeah, you are in the frame, but that's all right because yeah. you are supposed to be there. Henry brought to you by five. So you can uh, you can continue the scene. You're all good. It's on camera. So I um, I sort of I turn to the camera a little bit because I'm not picking anything up anymore, and I say I heard a voice. It was an older lady. She was <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, it was an older lady, and she was asking for somebody named Muriel. And I don't know who that is, but but I'm going to try and see if she will come to me and talk to me a little bit, and we can get to the bottom of this, so I can send her on her way <laughs> to heaven. Nothing. <laughs> um, so I'll just pretend like she's... Well, like, okay. what we do know... Is that often the voices that are unheard by the human ear can be picked up by some technologies. And he'll open up one of his pockets that would normally been, be meant for ammo and he pulls out a little sound recorder device. So you go ahead and keep talking to the ghosts and we'll see if we can pick them up on here. All right, let's try. <laughs> and he plays it. All right, sweetie. <laughs> So I want to talk to you. I want you to come over here and like talk to this box. You need to put your mouth real close to it so we can hear you. Nothing. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Darla and I want to help you. And I want to know why you're still here. I want to know what is keeping you... Uh, 
I want to know what's keeping you like, tied to this plane of existence because, sweetie, you know, you can't stay here forever, but we need to help you. I think I will handle this, friends. Uh, since you can't hear what's being said on the electronic voice phenomena, mm, we'll have to. You'll have to yeah. do a line of questions, and mm. then you'll do a, a reveal. Yeah, and, well, yeah. we could we could also just do like a couple times where she yeah she could she could say something and ask for a response. We could do like three times where she asks for a response, and then we could do a full playback. Right, right. So <clears> let's. We could also. We can. We can we fast. Need to fuck something. <laughs> so yeah, we can fast forward through that, and you all can review the footage, and you'll hear through the, her first two lines of question. No, no, nothing unusual. Just a little wind noise and some clothes rustling, um, and on the third one. Interestingly enough, you hear a, a strange scratching noise. It's not from one source. It sounds like, essentially, like a lot of small creatures, like nails against the floor kind of sound. And it, it starts off sort of quiet underneath her question, and as she trails off and, and leaves some time for the spirit to answer, it gets a little more pronounced and it continues through the end of the tape until you stop recording. Okay, so JD, although wants to believe, thinks that this is probably just him having moved the mic wrong or something, but he's still going to play it up as much as possible. So uh, Darla sort of like looks up at him and is like, did you hear that scratching? I, I absolutely heard that. That sounded like a lot of animals and we didn't, we didn't hear anything. I don't think we have anything on tape. No, I don't think so. I can't hear anything at all, to be honest. And so that has to be, that has to be, they, they said animals in the in the yeah. walls? It, uh, in, uh, there were reports before this place was shut down that the patients were hearing uh, animal noises and they were feeling like, they were feeling like they were being eaten alive while they slept. <laughs> Maybe this is the phenomenon they were talking about. So, and he's going to kind of turn to the camera and kind of take up more frame and be like, so it seems like we're dealing not with maybe just your regular homo sapien ghosts, but your animal ghosts. <laughs> we got rats, cats, raccoons maybe, who knows, whatever's got claws and crawls. We got them all. <laughs> <laughs> He'll just go on that line. I, I love the train of thought so much. Homo sapien ghosts. Oh, I want, I want homo sapien ghosts. <laughs> Bravo. Oh, Hashtag homo sapien ghosts. So, Darla, <laughs> how are you going to respond to JD taking up the frame? Ah, uh, well, I'm going to sort of get real close to him, like make sure that we're both sort of like even like, in the frame. And he's like, I, I have a lot of hair, you know, so it's like crowding your face a little bit. Bubba has to take a step back yeah. to get you in the frame. Because as it stands, when you try to sort of muscle in, it cuts off like right on the east side of your nose, and it's very unflattering, and he has yeah. to like step back to allow well, you. Well, that makes total sense to me, JD. You know, I believe that animals have spirits too, and I believe they go to heaven just like everybody else. So I can see this place having more than just people spirits. <laughs> Absolutely agree, Darla. It's it's got to be something beyond what we've seen before. Anything, any kind of regular ghost that we've had before, mm -hmm. this is something different, and there has to be a lot of them. All right, let's go back in the room. <laughs> so you go back in the room. <laughs> Uh, would either of you like to, now that you've gone through your required bits, um, would you like to do some investigating? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would actually like to see, around. like, I'd like to see kind of, like, what's below the dust. You said there's a desk. Yeah, like there's, there's, the it's a, it's stuff. a very, it's like a school desk. There's no drawers or anything. It's just a tabletop with legs and a decrepit chair. Mm -hmm. But, um, there are, you know, two beds in this room on either yeah. side, both with full sets of restraints and some sort of very unsettling stains. Uh, and they do hide, you know, the shadows hide quite a bit of the room. Yeah, and he wants to see if there's, like, anything maybe, like, that was etched into the desk before the fire. He's a crazy people they could have done anything on the walls or whatever. Sure. Um, mm. Well, the walls, you can't really tell what would have been there yeah. before the fire. And the uh, the desk is similarly charred. But the fire damage does not obscure uh, some small hatch marks and, you know, that weird S that everyone drew in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> it survived. 
Uh, it doesn't hide the the existing damage to the desk, but nothing that really that really strikes you as um, you know ominous. But uh, if you guys would like to make some rolls, you can yeah. do a more thorough uh, I search. Wanna, I want to investigate the bed, the bed area. So like the bed, maybe under the bed. Yeah, I'll do a. I'll just do the the wits investigation, mm -hmm. right? That wrong? Yeah, and any relevant like skill specialties that you three may have. Wits and a two investigation. Would sense for the strange um, be part of this or no? Mm, I wouldn't say so. Okay. No. Whoops, shit. I'm gonna fire up this. God damn. That would be. Four. Two. Four and two. All right, so JD, um, you are looking in the, the sort of a general search of the room, uh, and with four successes, you do find, let me find the notes for this. So what you do find, as you're looking towards the sort of open space in the window, wedged in what used to be the sort of jam of the, the window is a note. It's quite small, um, but it is there. And um, as you sort of tug the corner out, you find a whole packet of paper that's been strangely like wedged into the mm. like where there's it, when you have an old building like this, you have a layer of bricks and then a sort of wooden structure and then the exterior mm. bricks, and it's yeah. been sort of shoved strangely in the middle. <laughs> I'm gonna get like Bubba over and I'm like let's do a fine shot on this. I'm gonna kind of like try to like kind of push it slide it back into where I found it. <laughs> so maybe put some, like, sprinkle some extra ash dust or whatever on there yes. to make it look like it hasn't been touched yet. Some movie <laughs> dust. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, you're good to go with that. And um, what you find is, I'm actually going to hand you I this. I would just talk about the window and how someone might try to escape through this and be like, oh, what's this? And... <laughs> <laughs> And I find, we found some notes. <laughs> the first one appears to be a, a letter of some sort. It says, Dear Mrs. Rayleigh, I regret that I must write this to inform you that Hoyle and Shepard will no longer be able to continue in our current role as contractors effective immediately. I attach a copy of a deposition from one of our men concerning his discoveries in the sub-basement level of the East Wing as was, I trust, that this should itself prove adequate to explain his unwillingness to continue in this capacity. Please also find attached an invoice for the work done to date. I would like, I would be thankful if your payment was tendered as soon as possible. Yours sincerely, sincerely, A.D. Hoyle, Chief Foreman, Hoyle and Shepherd LLC. And then another sheet, the 20th of June, 1987. Please find enclosed a banker's check covering your work to date, along with an additional sum for your expenses, as agreed yesterday. Yours sincerely, Maria Rayleigh, St. Vincent Hospital Historic Site. Did you say Muriel? Did I? Uh, the names on the, the invoice, Maria. it is to a Mrs. A, a Mrs. Maria Riley, and from A.D. Hoyle, Chief Foreman. Oh, okay. Never mind. Good catch, though. Would have been. <laughs> that were the case. <laughs> Maria, actually. Okay. Because the voice that I heard, it was calling out for someone named Muriel. Well, it seemed as though. Once again, taking up camera space. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, edges her out physically. <laughs> well, he's, he's doing it with Shoves. the turn to the camera. <laughs> I, I'm just imagining whenever you guys are fighting for camera space, you are both getting progressively closer <laughs> towards the camera. Uh, yeah, Bubba is now just taking regular steps back to get them both in the well, frame. Well, it seems as though we've seen that the construction has stopped. There was obviously an attempt to repair the hospital after the fire, but it seems as though that the place is so haunted that the construction company was unable to continue and finish the repairs. Uh, so Darla, for your investigation, what do I need to do a roll? For expression? On, yeah. yeah, sure, let's find out how good you do. 
<laughs> got it. I won it. I have a four presence and a I four believe expression. in you. Roll those bones. Ooh. God damn. Woo. Can you do anything else? <laughs> <laughs> I did not stat anything that high. That's okay. Crashing into stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead, do your roll. Four successes? Four successes. You nail it, buddy. <laughs> it's the most stirring. In fact, Ooh. because you and Darla are continuously getting closer to camera and Bubba has to keep walking back, you actually end up with an incredibly stylish walk and talk shot down this hallway. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like right in front of each other. <laughs> and, and in fact, just as you introduce this construction company, which was unable to complete repairs, you actually kind of reach a corner uh, where there is a big sort of uh, hand like drill and an oscillating saw sitting on a shelf very thematically <laughs> introducing the construction crew which cleared out abruptly. It's a pretty fucking dynamic shot. They even left some of their equipment. <laughs> uh, but once that shot's taken care of, Darla, you sort of wave them down and, and uh, bring them back to the room where uh, you, when you were investigating under the bed, uh, did see some strange shapes moving, and you have decided that perhaps you want to come back and try and, and capture it on camera. Uh, I signal to Bubba. Uh, I, I say, come come a little closer. Come look at, uh, put the camera up so it sees under the bed. Um, and so I very sort of like slowly and like dramatically like lift up the sheet and like click on my flashlight. It's very creepy. Uh, and... From the light in your flashlight, you see not just two, but 10 or 20 small little circles of light refracted back, like the eyes of small rodents. <laughs> she uh, she kind of stumbles back and goes, oh, Jesus! <laughs> and uh, when she stumbles back, uh, a veritable horde of rats pour out. From the walls, oh, squeaking and skittering, and, and you recognize the noise from your recording earlier of tiny rat claws clawing against the in institutional tile floor. Uh, oh. So, Darla screams. <laughs> uh, and JD screams. <laughs> yeah, Bubba and Henry make make a, a beat a, a quick retreat down the hall. You're all welcome to role play this out if you uh, like. Do, do the rest of us hear this? You absolutely hear Darla scream, and you hear a lot of heavy steps running down uh, the stairs. I kind of imagine Darla is one of those girls that whenever she sees a rodent or a bug or anything she finds distasteful, she teleports on top of the nearest object. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she would... That being Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> she would... <laughs> well, it would probably be the desk, actually. Yeah, I was going to say the desk or the bed. Like, she teleports on top of the bed. <laughs> so the sort of the, the the rats sort of take over the room, and you're all looking at each other, kind of screaming. Uh, Can hear me out, JD? Can you jump on the bed too? And we're like holding each other, <laughs> <laughs> screaming. <laughs> no. I don't know that JD'd be up for that. He does not like. <laughs> it would be hilarious. Just think, just think you made a very poor decision to stay in the room. All right. <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god, I just so did not sign up for this. You know what, guys, great job, let's get out of here. Um, Darla, sweetie, are you okay? Uh, I don't think I can touch the floor. Oh my <laughs> god, it's on my feet. Oh my god, it's on uh, my feet. Ah! And he runs down the hallway. Well, a lot of help he is. And I, um, I take a breath, and I jump off the bed, and hopefully I take out a rat while I'm there. Aww. <laughs> I mean, do you want to roll the hit? <laughs> <laughs> the first attack. Oh, kick just, a rat. Just roll me a, ten, a d10. Okay. Let's just roll it's a perfect, straight percentile roll here. It's a here. perfect oh, it's RPG for an enemy. A three. three! I can't say it's an attack, but you can roll. All right, so you miss. You, you don't hit any. Yeah, right? I feel like uh, once Darla is off camera, um, I feel like she's just she sort of just stops off. You know, like she stomps through the rats and she, she <laughs> pushes them out of the way. So you all stomp your way back down to the main atrium and arrive uh, back at the, the relative safety of base camp and meet your fellow party members. What the hell was that? Listen, uh, <clears throat> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> we are so not okay. We are not going back up there. Yeah, this place has rats. Yeah. Uh, you so, don't say. You're surprised? Lots of rats. Yeah, more than one rat. 
More than five rats. Uh, More well, than five, wow. Let's just say the only thing I could think to describe them as is a horde. A horde of rats. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look to Bubba and just mouth, I'm sorry. He, he gives you the praying hands. <laughs> and just nods in a very sort of sage manner. Uh, I would just like to reiterate that I have not gotten a safety mask yet. <laughs> Listen, I think we have a few more things to worry about than yeah. asbestos. Uh, even though it was originally my concern, uh, I don't think that we should be in a place with this many rodents. <laughs> yeah, and what was that about the sub basement? Isn't that's kind of weird? Sub basement. I mean. You know, we found these letters, and he'd hand them over to whoever. <laughs> Probably the the doc first, because he's usually the one to present. Mm. Kind oh, of thanks. Uh, history stuff. Vic, maybe. Even though he's kind of hesitant to give it to Vic. <laughs> <laughs> what? It, hand it over. What is it? What? what why? Yeah, come on. He's kind of, like, pushing it towards him, and then hands him, like, the secondary letter. That just says, okay, we'll leave. Like, here's your money. <laughs> he, that he's, letter, the, the one with, like, not very much information, he'll give to one, Vic while he, the... One snatch is a box and reading his, uh, I'll want to talk to him. <laughs> so, uh, Wolf will look over the letter, and mm. he kind of nods a bit. <laughs> okay, now, this is, this is much better. Yeah, yep. kind of... Yeah, uh, like, this is way more believable than, uh, the other one. <laughs> like, uh, oh, you, what's your name again? Yeah, yeah, Henry, nice to meet you. Uh, and we met. Gives, nice to meet you. Give you a jaunty handshake. And yeah, he returns it. Or interrupts. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, this is way more believable. Like, the last letter I found was, uh, I don't know, a bit heavy-handed. Letter? What letter? I, I just wrote the information packet. Yeah, no, no, kid. Like, uh, alright, maybe you didn't write it, but... Yeah, it was left in the desk over there, and it was all like, there's eyes in the walls, and you know, all that. Desk? Yeah. We're not supposed to touch any of the furniture here. It could have any kind... I mean, we just found rats, for fuck's sake. I mean, I mean, that, I mean, that was a stroke of luck. That we had the, we had the, like, the itching sound on, <laughs> hey. on the recorder. Well, I, I don't know what you're talking about, but uh, I was really lucky to get this job, so when Brad tells me not to touch stuff, I don't. Hey, Doc. Yeah, uh, you said they said something about the sub basement. You think that has anything to do with that key that we definitely didn't find in any sort of furniture? Oh yeah, the one we just kind of stumbled across. Yeah, well, SB sub basement makes sense, right? Well, yeah. Well, who does Ben have setting stuff up? Hmm? To Henry, JD, be like, who does Ben have setting stuff up? Who's who's? What we we don't plans? set anything up. That's what we have you for. So you're telling me that 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 these letters are real? That that they come from this place? That yeah, that that the construction crew actually got spooked enough and that this construction stuff wasn't just like tossed in here. I mean, listen, I'm not saying that they're real cuz I don't know. I just came here this morning, but I mean, we're not the first film crew. I guess it could be a prank. Let me see. I mean, I guess, I guess... Does anyone hand him? Uh, Vic has been uh, just grabbing everything once people are done with it, and now he just has <laughs> them all in, like, a pile in his arms, just kind of like... And he's he's a little uneasy to give it up, but he's just kind of like, here, here you go. Well, he doesn't actually have to give it up, because Henry takes one look at the bloody s- scrap of sheet and throws it back at you. Vic has <laughs> realized oh, like, what he was Oh my god, was that bloody, is so just, unhealthy! Ah! Oh my god, what if they had AIDS? Oh my god! Okay, I need, a, I need, I'm gonna need some sort of shot. Uh, got, it. well, I mean, if it had We already got a shot of the letters, Vic. We already got a shot of the letters. No, I mean, like, a <laughs> shot to make sure that I don't get something. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, me second. Yeah, I didn't touch any of that stuff. I'm sure it's not that bad. No, I, I don't, you know, I've skinned a few animals in my life. Because I grew up in Georgia, and that's just kind of what you do with a hobby. <laughs> but, but no, no, I'm serious. That looks like a real blood. If I ever saw it. I'm... So are we getting medical help or what? He says with his hands still up. <laughs> There's no hey, blood on it. He's just... Have you have you gotten hurt? No. Have you touched anything? No. Okay, you're fine. There's your medical help. Okay, good. <laughs> he still, like, wipes it off on J.D.'s shoulder. <laughs> 
<laughs> Poor JD. I don't know what you're wiping, but I don't think I want to know. <laughs> it's the okay. germs we can't see. Okay. God, I wish the rest of the crew were still here. God, I wish I could go home, but... Um, well, it'd be nice to know who set this stuff up so we could follow whatever they wanted us to do. And they just all... Yeah, I mean, clearly that's what it's telling us we need to do. I mean, this says clues. something about the basement. You said you found a key to the basement? Uh, well, I think so. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, SB could mean a lot of things. But... Just a work in theory. I, I, I would... I would have... But it's probably... I don't think it's that. <laughs> Guys, I mean, it can't be a coincidence for whoever was setting up all of these clues for I us. Mean, no, that that he, they would leave us a letter that says sub-basement and leave us a key that has SB on it. I well, mean, if you're just using Scooby-Doo logic... I mean, if, I mean, I guess <laughs> I guess this is how they wanted to go, essentially setting up a, a weird, spooky scavenger hunt to maybe, I don't know, get some more real shots out of us. I mean, I've never heard of anything... Like this, this is I mean, like something that actually happened. It sounds a bit <laughs> spooky, but that's kind of what we're here for. So maybe we should just I mean, go I and do it. I guess Bergman had more of a budget than I thought. You know. Yeah, I'm actually really enthralled, and I really feel very lucky that we're part of this crew right now. If this is the way the show is gonna go, because that's gonna be that's gonna be real good television, folks. I can only imagine. Well, what what time is it? Next Ish. Uh, Henry Henry looks at his wrist, realizes he's not wearing a watch, and then pulls out a cell phone. <laughs> it is about eleven thirty. You've all finished pretty much on time. Yeah. What was what was next? Was it just for shooting for the rest of the day? Uh, yeah. Well, we're supposed to wrap at about two a.m. Uh, and we were supposed oh. to from now until then we were supposed to go downstairs and do our like wrap up where we play all the footage that you guys found. You know, and uh, and we talk about you know how spooky and haunted, but we can't say for sure what happened here. Maybe we were well, supposed to do that down downstairs. Did you guys get a shot of the key and stuff? Yeah. Finding the key. Well, we got a shot of finding the letters. So now we should do a shot where we explain to the audience that we're going down to the sub basement. And we're going to check it out. At the very least, we should find the sub basement, even if we don't go there today. Yeah. Okay. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah, let's bring all the evidence together to me, and then I will say that we should go into the sub. How about, how about we just put all three of us in, in, in the front, you know? Okay, but I would like to be in the center. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's all right, cool. Now, shouldn't I be in well, the Well, I center? guess maybe everybody can be. Well, Henry. <laughs> can we fit four people in the shot? Henry doesn't know. <laughs> but but Bubba looks at Mason. Okay. So, so, can I... Can I do some diplomacy here? Sure. <laughs> okay. Please Can do. We, rather than getting everybody in this shot, let's get all the evidence in the shot, and you guys can be talking over the evidence. And I can get everybody's hands, and I can get everybody's features, and everyone's voice, and you can all participate, and it can be very thematic and dramatic. I like that. You Works have some good ideas, Mason. Okay. I'm just going to... Find the nearest table and just yank the shit over. <laughs> just <laughs> it's a it happens to be a disconnected metal filing cabinet underneath the center console. Good. It makes an unholy screech as you move it, <coughs> yeah. but you are able to put it in the center of the just yeah the room. no screeching the whole way. I hope that everyone's plugging their ears and just grimacing. Here we go. <sighs> Get some of that dust off. I'd like to leave handprints if I could. And just all right. Get going, guys. Plop down our evidence. Or however we want to do it. i get my camera uh, ready. Uh, Vic is going to come up with, with what he has in hand and just sort of like spreads it around the table and just Rolling. sort of sort of like finds the finds the bloody bedding and just sort of like, uh, and, sort of, and sort of moves it away. Uh, Darla's going to go basically over to Vic's right and sort of like sidle up beside him. And, uh, and right. well, action. The, you know, depending on the frame... Can I stand on it? Like JD will intentionally take up yeah. a okay. separate portion and equidistant ways away from the evidence but so that he can kind of carve out his own space. And he can take out his recorder that has the scratching noises on it. Oh, I'm doing a top-down. So, And uh, where's Wolf in all this? Oh, good yeah. question. Where's Wolf in all this? Um, Jimmy Wolf. <laughs> so I guess Wolf is... Wolf's kind of a big guy, so I guess he's just kind of squeezing himself in wherever he can fit. He's not an actor, so he's not as, you know, passionate about getting the center stage. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately, they're hogging the screen so thoroughly that Wolf's pretty much just a floating head. Oh. <laughs> right. uh, first things first, uh, are, are, are we rolling yet? Yeah. Good. Uh, Vic is going to uh, pick up the, the key with SB18 on it and just sort of like hold it in a, in a way that shows off the, the letters and all that. And, he's, and, he, and he says, SB, SB, <coughs> sorry, SB, what could that possibly stand for? Probably a sub basement. Yeah, we uh, found upstairs. We found these letters that say that uh, they couldn't complete renovations on the sub basement. Is that right? Yeah, they said that they couldn't. That that the the crew was getting very creeped out through the noises they heard, kind of like this. And he plays the the small recorder, and and that they were gonna go ahead and leave, and they expected to get paid for the work they'd done. And in fact, they seemed to have left so fast that they left some of their equipment behind. Truly horrifying. So what we need to do is go and check out that basement. That sounds good to me. Yeah, and according to the evidence I found, we might have something suspicious in the sub-basement itself. And he produces and reads through the letter they found at the beginning. It's very stirring. Something went wrong (laughs) in that sub-basement, and we need to get to the bottom of it. Awesome! Thank you. Thanks. Oh, wow. Thank Thanks, you. Henry. That felt cool. Thank you. That Thanks, was cool. Henry. Yeah. Thanks. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. And cut. Yeah. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Now we have to go to the sub basement. All right, Henry. Since you seem to know this place the best, where, where is, is the sub basement? Where is the sub basement? <laughs> so oh, it's basement. right this way. He leads you around the the central central console with the column behind. He walks you around at the semicircle, and just behind it, you see a very grandiose set of spiral staircases. So, does the sub-basement mean it's below the actual basement? Unfortunately, yes. So, it's like a, a, what, like a, so, is the sub-basement 18? Is there 18 sub-basements, or is it just a door (laughs) number? It seems like a lot of basements. Uh, when, When we're going up to the spiral, is it just one of those... Up and down. It's kind of a set of double spiral staircases that clearly go to the same place, but they are disconnected and independent spirals. So, so it's like a double helix. Yeah, it's um, you know what, uh, Wolf, can yeah? you roll me a um uh, intelligence academics, please? Oh yeah, sure. Um, okay. Uh, oh. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, let's see. That should be. It's an insane asylum, and you're a psychiatrist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got five successes, actually. Wow, that works really well. Wow. wow. So um, as a psychologist yourself, um, you recall that uh, back in the day, uh, it was very common for these institutions to be swept with diseases and um, sort of pandemic experiences. And so during that time, they developed a procedure by which different stairways had to be used to go down and up in order to contain the spread of pathogens. So you're welcome to share that if you'd like. Okay. So Wolf is going to go ahead and he kind of gets this goof, this like huge history nerd grin. And he starts walking down the stairs. And while he's doing so, he starts talking about how, yeah, so these stairs would be used for going down and those would be used for going up. And that way they never cross contaminate like patients or doctors or anyone. It's pretty cool. Are we, are we, are we rolling? Uh, yeah, I was recording that. Oh, cool. Good. If he started talking, <laughs> then yeah. Okay. Can I, when we start to descend the stairs, can I get a shot of peering over and maybe dropping something and watching it fall? I don't know how far down it goes, but if it's really Sure, I mean, it goes down quite a ways, um, but you'll have to throw it with some momentum because it is a sort of, like, they're wide stairs. Uh, It's made in a a modern way, not not much like a castle and more just like a... Like you might see it in a mansion house where you have a very long sort of oh. like angled staircase. Okay. But it is a very cool shot, and if you linger, you'll get to see all of the cast members going down. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to wait then. Vic is going to go down first, and he's going to like look back over his shoulder just very dramatically, like, whoa. And <laughs> it's like, down this way to the sub basement. Um. You do it, you do it excellently. The moment is kind of ruined by the fact that uh, Wolf has already preceded you down the stairs. <laughs> So Wolf is just very, very nonchalantly in his lab coat, just strolling down the stairs. Vic, Vic turns back around and realizes what has just happened, and he's like, "Ah, oh, damn it!" 
<laughs> and Wolf's oblivious. It's the best. So you all make it, be careful. Oh, you all God. make it down the stairs. Okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, the many footsteps of this this uh, intrepid group sort of reverberate on the the marble surfaces in this sort of uh, almost tunnel like passage down. And you go into a large and very modern, um, I say very modern, 1990s looking um, sort of atrium. It's the same shape as the room that you were just in, only it's much uh, more open. There's not really a large security desk there. There's just a small little reception opposite the stairs, a few lines of of chairs as though it's a waiting room of some kind, and uh, protruding from either end an angled hallway, just like the, the space above. However, each of these hallways is blocked off by a set of very thick uh, glass and metal doors that are sealed shut, and uh, they have biohazard signs on either side. The one to the right is open. Does it, so, does it look like it was open recently? Yeah, in fact, Henry goes over there and um, uh, sort of walks inside and turns the light on as though he's familiar with the space. Okay. So what kind of what kind of diseases were supposed to be in here? Oh, malaria. He oh. he nods very nonchalantly. But it's been totally cleaned out since then. You really don't need to worry, he says as he pulls on his mask. <laughs> <laughs> you really don't need to worry. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I cover my nose with my shawl again. <laughs> uh, Vic looks around and realizes he's the only one without face protection. You just pull. Uh, JD would just pull up some of his tank top over his nose. He <laughs> the bloody cloth at him. <laughs> oh. No, not going to happen. Okay. I'll... So uh, he, he catch walks malaria. in, and uh, as you all follow, it uh, gives way to a very spacious and uh, actually very organized lab. There's sort of big exam tables and cabinets full of jars of various colors, it looks very much like sort of the abandoned building the place is. Like this place was left in working order abruptly without any kind of packing or liquidation of goods. Um, along one wall, you see a line of steel uh, morgue shelves and with doors. And uh, to the very far of that, another security door, uh, which is a metal door totally um, secure and locked down with a, with a heavy looking door jam, but a very sleek glass window, which shows you through into the small security sort of passage and another security door on the other side. And um, Henry at this point is a bit less jovial than he has been, uh, his adrenaline crashing a bit. <laughs> uh, and he sort of looks through the window and looks back at you and he's like, you know, this was a lot less creepier this morning. He fishes out uh, from his back pocket a, uh, a plastic key card, which he swipes through the old... The, the key card mechanism is actually so dated that it's still in that sort of tan-colored plastic. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the light, which is a manual LED, clicks on and the door opens up. And he sort of ushers you all into this security uh, situation. Do you follow? Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. Reluctantly. So once you're all in, uh, the door closes behind, and he, he sort of looks at his watch and looks at you all and is like, sorry, this is like, it's totally weird. You can't open both doors at the same time. And then he swipes on the second keypad, and the second door opens up. And what lies beyond is the stuff of nightmares. It is the start of a staircase down, which is a modern construction, drywalled with hand railings. But after about a 15 foot section, it turns into just wood framing. And after another 10 feet, it turns into simply a clay earth tunnel. Oh wow. I uh, Whoa. click on my flashlight. <laughs> and at this point, Mason, um, you should know that only infrared cameras will allow you to get footage. You will not be able to have lighting from here on out. You might happen to have the uh, oh, yeah. equipment to switch to uh, that. So. Yes, you have a, a whole separate camera. Um, you've been shooting on, on a, it's not quite the handy cam you were promised, but a very low-end camera. Yeah. Uh, 
and uh, on the other, and you sort of in one of your pockets, you have essentially like a camcorder, like a, a hobbyist camcorder that has an infrared function. Sure. And you can pop that out, and, and it, it functions just fine in that green and black screen yep. kind of way. And uh, Henry sort of looks between you all, and he's like, well, this is the sub-basement. So what's in the tunnel under the snuff basement? You won't find out in episode one, that's for sure. You're going to have to tune in next Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central to find out. Or if you're impatient and you want to know right now, you can also find our podcast. We are on iTunes, we are on Spotify, Stitcher, and Podbean. If you're having trouble locating those, you can find us on Twitter at Uncanny Show. And from there, if you're really cool, you can join our most dedicated fans on our Discord. Thank you so much to the Onyx Path for hosting us here. Thank you to Lobo Loca, to Purple Planet Music, and Daniel Birch, who all provided the amazing tunes you've heard throughout this episode. And thank you to all the amazing artists on Pexels.com who donate their photography for small projects like ours to, you know, make us look a little bit better and show their work. I think that's all the plugs I have, so thank you all for watching all the way to the end, and we hope to see you next week. Until then, stay safe and have a great night.